Okay, there are so many horrible diseases, uh, like cancer and heart failure, but the most frustrating ones are the chronic diseases, like hypertension, cholesterol, obesity, and diabetes. And those diseases are frustrating because we do have medications for them. And for those diseases, the reason, first, most of us know probably someone with a chronic disease. And as I know from my short experience in the clinic, there is a gap, an unknown or mysterious gap between the patients, the medications, and the way they treat themselves. And that mysterious gap is something we thought about and we worked in the, in the group uh, a few weeks ago. But what it means to have uh, juvenile diabetes? Let us say it's an autoimmune disease. The onset is early in life. It can come uh, when you when birth and up to 25, 26 years old. But most of the patients are 10 to 12 years old. And, uh, uh, but that's not the story. What's important here is the narrative of those patients. And the narrative is the daily struggle. Those, those patients need to wake up in the morning, and if the child is a little bit dizzy, maybe he's in a hippo, which means low glucose levels. Maybe it's just dizzy because this is how it should looks in the morning. And uh, then he needs to be pricking the finger. That was be the first time. And then his mother will go and start counting the carbs. Those carbs eventually become the amount of units of insulin we get uh, afterward. And that routine continues uh, on and on. And then she needs to deliver the child, the parents, to the kindergarten, to school, and then they need to pass it to a caregiver. Hopefully, she or he, he or she will know how to treat that child, give him the right insulin, Make sure he eats his food after he gets the shot. So it's a daily struggle, and it, it, it's a full change of the routine of those children. This little fellow named Henry is four years old, and as you can see in his face, he's not a very happy, happy uh, it's not a very happy face. And this is his first prick in the morning. He can't really eat his food because his mother is uh, need to count the carbs to check how much blood he has in his, uh, how much glucose he has in his blood, and according to that, she will give him the insulin afterward. This little fellow doesn't know the late consequences of his disease. He doesn't know that there is so many uh, problems he can develop if he won't treat himself. He's still a child. He's still developing his habits. And all that leads to a basic concept that is the reality shows the low compliance. And we all talked to him, we've already heard some people talking about compliance, but this is a big, a big problem for, the, for the, uh, those ages. And we talked with physicians, with doctors, and with patients, and we all uh, heard that most of those kids on those ages, they, they're not being complied and they don't get to the right. Uh, I will show you this in the graph later. They don't comply with the treatment, they don't check enough their blood glucose, and they don't, they get to a very high glucose in their blood and they're not balanced. Not being complicated, it, not to comply, brings a long-term complications. And long-term compl complications are horrible and I'm not going to talk about each of them. But I can say that I, when I encountered the patient in the ER uh, the other day, and he came with a, a, a very, something that seemed to be a complication of uh, diabetes, I told him, uh, listen, maybe hypertension is known to be the, the number one uh, silent killer, but uh, diabetes, as I can see, it is the number one torture, and eventually it will kill you. And that was uh, it, trying to scare the patient, and it doesn't work usually. You can also see complications from uh, money-wise, and as you can see, almost 50% of the expenses over the over the vetted patients goes to hospital inpatient care, which means they're complicated and they're staying in hospital. And this graph, this is a very basic graph for uh, diabetic patients. The A1C is the average of the last, the last three months of balance of those patients. And as you can see, how those kids are stuck in the red zone, and the red zone is the danger zone of the, and the, the zone of the complications. And if you're here, you will have eventually, you will lose your vision. You will become direct, uh, uh, you will lose your kidneys, and other horrible disease. We want to move that to the desirable range, which is the green zone. Eventually, all in all, it's a bad experience for those kids. And bad experience leads to low compliance. And low compliance brings <coughs> complications. And complications is something you and I want to prevent. And in order to prevent those complications, we want to break the cycle. In order to break the cycle, we need to change the experience.
if we can change the experience by even a little bit, we can make a big difference. Our journey, we began a few weeks ago at the T2Med 3DS program, where we worked very hard at addressing this problem and trying to figure out how can we solve it. We came up with a lot of different ideas, a lot of different features. And uh, one of our main features, which I'd like to introduce you to now, we like to call the Glucogotchi. He's a friend for the journey. He accompanies the child step by step, day by day, helping him understand his disease and to do better and to treat himself better. Glucogotchi. Glucogotchi is a, is, a uh, is, a, is a mobile application, an avatar, a character for the child to interact with. There's lots of different features, including uh, meal times, feeding, and most of all, it teaches the patient how to deal with the problem. The child then is allowed to project his own disease onto the Glucogotchi friend, and this allows him to deal with it in a new way. He, he treats his friend as he treats himself, and as the Glucogotchi gets better, he gets better. As we spoke about before, as we spoke about before, we said that children don't understand the, me the immediate impact, of, they don't understand the long-term impact of not treating themselves today, whether it be not measuring their blood glucose levels or not taking insulin. By integrating different methods, like uh, reward systems, point systems, we are, we are allowed to give the child instant feedback, which allows him to understand now, here, why he must take care of himself. And in the long term, we can foster good behavior, which will stay with him into the future as an adult. Here we have a, a little boy about the age of three. We gave him a, a, a small prototype of our group of Gochi just to push the button and get a feel for it. He loved it. He had so much fun, he didn't want to give it up. And when, he did, and when we did take it away from him eventually, he turned to his father and asked him immediately when he could get one. Our first happy customer, hopefully of many. <laughs> so, achieving su success, how do, we change the how do we change the characteristics of these children? How do we make them treat, and treat themselves better? So we have positive reinforcement, right? If we can show them that if we can show them in interactive ways by using rewards that they can take care of themselves better and learn about the disease at the same time, we can change who they are today for the better and it will stay with them long term. Additionally, right, we said before, the child is allowed to project himself onto the character and by helping the character, he helps himself, learns about his disease and becomes stronger in that way. Uh, as a, an assisting device to help parents and caregivers to, to, uh, to talk to the child, to deal with the child. Maybe it's the first time or maybe it's the hundredth time, but it will help the child to deal with his disease. And additionally, if the child is, for example, at school by himself, and he's still using his glucogotchi, the parent can get feedback, and you can see that his child is doing well, and he'll be less worried about his child. <laughs> so the benefits, glucogotchi, right? We can improve compliance, that's the bottom line. If we can help children to take care of themselves by even a little bit, we've done our job. We can change how patients look at the problem, we can educate them about the disease and about how they take care of themselves. We encourage new good habits today that stick with the, the child for the rest of their life. And we minimize complications, ultimately improving patient prognosis, maybe even saving lives. All of this acts as a sort of preventative medicine, a preventative medicine that could be as effective as an alternate drug. So, future opportunities. There's, there's so much out there. It's a very exciting field. Mobile medicine, you're all here today, you understand the, the opportunities. Just for, just for example, one little example. Imagine a group of gotchi, right? Every child or every, a few sick children have their own group of gotchi, their own little friend, and they interact over the internet in a sort of, sort of social media set. You make new friends, maybe virtual, maybe one day real, maybe similar people like you. They learn about the disease, and it will help the child deal with his problems. He's no longer alone, he's no longer different. Of course, we can take this to different diseases, other chronic diseases, like hypertension or like obesity. And, and, uh, the, and the, the different features and different tools can, all, uh, can constantly be added. In fact, I'm sure some of you in the audience have ideas already about potential applications, other ideas. So I'm David, this is Roy. Come to us later. We'll, we'll have a chat about it.